right, welcome right. to another episode of the Sports Guys. Really glad you're here, and we're here to talk about, of course, our favorite sport, which is football. And uh, we've been without it for seven months. Uh, we're finally here. We've gotten through the preseason season. Uh, yesterday, my Panthers got their first preseason win. It was really good to see them actually score some touchdowns. But uh, it's been really exciting uh, off season. A lot of things have happened. A lot of teams have picked up new quarterbacks. We have a lot of uncertainty going into this year. A lot of teams seem to have improved as well. And uh, the question, big question this year is going to be, can the Chiefs three-peat or is it going to be somebody else? In this show today, we're going to be taking you through a 2024 season preview. And uh, Rob and I are going to be putting a lot of predictions on record as to what's going to happen this season. How are you doing, Robbie? I'm doing great. Ready to go with some hot takes. Uh, and some are going to look silly in retrospect three months from now. But I'm ready to go. It'll be a lot of fun. Get us both on record on a lot of these things that we talk about yeah. every single morning driving to work. And we finally get a chance to uh, put this out there for the people. So that's why we do this. So you yeah. all are very important to us out there, um, but you'll get to laugh at us when we're wrong. <laughs> and a really fun announcement I wanted to give everybody. Uh, Rob has come up with a fantastic idea. We have, of course, this one long form video we do once a week. Uh, which uh, we've been getting tremendous feedback from you guys on our long form videos. But we also want to put one short form video out every single week. And we're going to do it every Monday. It's going to be 15 minutes long and it's going to be our hot takes from the weekend. We're going to call it the sports guys hot takes segment. And uh, so we're really looking forward to bringing the first one to you this week and every Monday, uh, especially through the football season where we're going to bring you kind of our hot takes from the weekend, um, mostly football, but any kind of sports-related hot takes. So great idea, Robbie. Thanks. All right, Rob, uh, your quick thoughts on the 2024 NFL season, what you're the most excited about, and you can even delve into college football too if you want to talk about things you're excited about there. Uh, I'm excited the Dolphins are going to win the Super Bowl. Ooh, wow. Uh, now that's a hot take. We'll see. Uh no, I'm excited to see the season play out. I'm, I'm, this was one of the more um, – th this this last NFL draft I was more invested in than, than I had in previous years. So it'll be really interesting to see if the teams really address what they needed and if the players coming in are going to take that next step. You know, yesterday we watched Trey Lance, who was a, a third pick in an overall draft. Third pick um, – he threw five interceptions, uh, and he's in his, what, sixth year, fifth year? So, you know, he was a mistake. I mean, there's just – there's no other way to say it. So Especially how many, three first-round picks uh, traded for him. That's Yeah, you know. three first-round picks traded for him, and they basically built the Miami Dolphins from that. Um, so how many mistakes were made in this last draft, and how many – Patrick Mahomes's were located or Tom Brady's were located uh, in later rounds and how many teams but took took their pick and made it something that was going to make their team better. It's not just quarterback. I, I have never no, remembered a, a draft that was so deep as this one. I mean, we're talking yeah. wide receiver. We're talking yeah. a lot tight of the running end. backs came out. Tight Lineman. end. Mm -hmm. linemen on both sides of the ball, pass rushers yeah. and offensive linemen. Um, I will say this was more this was more offensive draft heavy um so there were some good defensive players taken no question but like the Steelers getting Peyton Wilson I think that was a huge pick you know I think they got better because of that one of the best value picks in the whole draft was Peyton Wilson yeah. dropping down to the fourth round and he's a defense defensive player there were very good defensive players taken in this draft but I think the stars coming out of this draft are mostly going to be on the offensive side. And you notice 60% of the draft picks were, were uh, offensive. So that tells me that this is an offensive league, really. But there are many busts that were taken that you don't know that yet. Um, and I remember Tiki Barber said it back in the day. He said, the reason that it's not an exact science of drafting and all that is because some people peak out at their highest level they're ever going to get to in high school, and it never translates to college. Some people peak at their highest performance level in college and never go higher to an NFL level. Some mm -hmm. people get to the NFL barely, 
and they get in there and they work harder than everyone else and they excel beyond people like a James Harrison or somebody who's just a beast in the weight room or somebody who comes alive, P Puka Nakua, nobody ever heard of. Um, guys are, some are ascending still when they hit the NFL and some you've seen the best football out of them you're ever going to see. As a matter of fact, my Barbara said there's, there's no way to predict which is which for people until you see mm -hmm. them put on the pads at the NFL level and see if they ascend or if they even regress sometimes. As a matter of fact, my Panthers, some of the real stars coming out of training camp were undrafted free agents. We have a tight mm -hmm. end who's a complete stud who was an undrafted free agent, and we drafted a tight end, so we have two new guys. Yep. And then we have a running back that nobody had ever heard of out of Northwestern who has just been making huge headlines, um, had a huge game yesterday and 120 mm -hmm. yards rushing. So um, you can pick up those guys that aren't even in the draft, that are undrafted and that are hungry and that end up making a big impact later. So Yeah. But what's um, but cool is how many possibilities out of this draft might be superstars. Because while not all of them are going to be, and we know this, there may be slightly higher number than normal of guys that were first-round picks that are going to become real stars, you know? The one, the, other thing, the one other thing you can't predict is injuries. So, like, um, yeah. you, had, you talked about the guy, who, the guy who peaks in high school, the guy who peaks in college, and the guy who peaks in the pros. Yeah. You might have a, a guy who has the talent to be a star in the mm -hmm. NFL but can't stay healthy. So you're right. talking about, like, a Tua or a Burrow. These are guys that could potentially be superstars, but um, can they really stay healthy? And um, that, that happens on the running back side. You know, think about um, – Think about over the last 50 years, how many amazing players we never were able to really enjoy because they kept getting hurt. So they got cut and then no one else wanted to touch them. How many amazing athletes never quite got there, even though their talent level may be some of the best that would have ever played. I'll bet you there's a, a wide receiver out there who could have been better than Jerry Rice, but he just kept having a knee problem or he, no you question. know what I mean? No question about it. So like Tom Brady, why was he able to play 22 seasons and he missed one season because of a knee injury? He so he up. played 21 out of 22, 21 out of 22, and he went to 10 Super Bowls. But why yeah. is he able to do that and a guy like Joe Burrow can't stay healthy? And and yet we know when Joe Burrow's healthy, he's one of the top three quarterbacks in the league. Availability. Easily. Availability. Yeah. So that, that's a question. The, the Patriots mm -hmm. always had a strong offensive line. There was one year where they didn't, and he got hurt. Mm -hmm. So they prioritized. First of all, they were always real stingy with the cap. They never overpaid anybody, almost ever. Occasionally they would, but um, but they always prioritized keeping Brady healthy by keeping an offensive line in front of him that mm -hmm. had ma massive guys like Nate Solder and guys like that, um, real beasts on the offensive line who were work pale workmen who were going to protect Brady. That was a yep. huge part of their strategy was keeping Brady healthy. That has not been an important part of the Bengals. And so mm -hmm. you're seeing the results of Burrow getting hurt because they want to have all these skill position players and trying to be beef up their defense. Um, Burrow's running for his life, you know? So yeah. that, that's a, that's a GM problem. But, but 15 years from now, how many hall of famers do you think, that were drafted in the 2024 draft? I think quite a few. I don't know about Hall of Fame. You'd have to have them ascend like Tiki Barber was talking about. Maybe some of them do, some of them don't. And then all of them, when they ascend, they continue to build yeah. Hall of Fame credentials, which is – And they have to be, be productive every single year for like yeah. 10 years. Well, they that's to impossible to predict. But yeah. how many of these guys could be uh, pro productive – it could be a lot of them. So I think a lot of them. Like, like, what about like a Joe Alt? You know, mm -hmm. he was he was from Notre Dame. He really highly drafted. You have to think yep. a guy like that, if he stays healthy, he's got a chance to be a Hall of Fame type player. Should, should be. Uh, Marvin Harrison Jr., Roma Dunze. You got all these guys that are that are great receivers. All have a chance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then there's probably corners and linebackers that we don't know yet that are going to emerge and be, be stars at their position. And then so. what do you do with guys like Malik neighbors who are lighting it up in, in, in preseason, but their team is clearly not on the right track. And Jones is not a great quarterback. So they're a bad, they're a bad team. 
probably going to look really bad in the NF in the regular season. And you have this superstar potential guy. Like what we have our fantasy do do? football draft. We have our fantasy football draft on Tuesday night. Uh, our Pope family fam. And by the way, I will let you guys know I'm going to be live streaming that. So if you guys want to watch our fantasy draft as a family, you can watch it Tuesday night. But um, do I take a guy like Malik Neighbors or do I shy away from him, even though he's great because of who his quarterback is? You know, those are the kind of questions I'm going to be asking myself that night. I think it's OK to take him as long as you didn't invest a high pick in him. Your high picks need to be a lot like in real life. Your can't miss guys. To me, he feels like a flyer. You know, I would take Roma Dunze because I think he's going to very quickly become the number one receiver for Caleb Williams. So, um, you know, I don't know. That's just the way I look at it. I want a guy who's yeah. regularly productive every single week. Yeah. So, any other quick thoughts about 2024 season before we get into the presentation? Excited to go. Um, I think. Um... It's going to be interesting to see how the, the draft parlays into real life. I think it's going to be exciting. I think most teams seem to have improved. And so I think that I'm hoping it raises the level of play. I agree with Tom Brady. He felt like 2023 was really a subpar year for NFL football, and I agree with that. I think mm -hmm. there were a lot of really mediocre to bad teams. Mm -hmm. And um, he says the overall play in the league is down a bit. And um, I agree with him. And I think that hoping this draft addressed some of that. And we'll see. It should have. I think I think 2023 was the result of COVID, where a lot of teams were taking a shot blindly at players, hoping. And I think there's there was a lot less um, video on people. So I think we need to give 2023 a pass. And no, I but also also it wasn't just COVID, but it was there was a couple of drafts in a row, 2019, 2020, 2021, that were not great and were not very no, deep. But no, but I, I think COVID messed up the system of drafting. So I think 2023 was kind of the final year where we didn't have a lot of film on people. We were willing to take a chance on a Trey Lance or a, you know, mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, I think now it's more back to a science where you see the tendencies um, and then you start to, you know, you can't tell if someone's a hard worker um, unless you talk to their coaches and, and all that stuff. But mm -hmm. um, during COVID, it was hard. So I think that that that's what happened. I think that yeah. there was there was a regression in the way people trained. There was a mm -hmm. regression in the way you could track talent. Mm -hmm. um, scouts were confused. I think it was just difficult. I think we're back on track now. So I think we're, we're a lot closer. And a lot of players decided to stay in more years. So we had this big flood of talented players coming out that probably mm -hmm. would have streamed out over the course of two to three years. Um, like Bo Nix in the past would have come out much earlier. He mm -hmm. wouldn't have come out in the middle of this sea of talented players. So um, this was a particularly strong draft that I don't think we'll see again for a while. Um, and that's why COVID. And also you mentioned not just the COVID effect, but also COVID in terms of 2024, you had a lot of fifth and sixth year type players. Like a no, that's what I'm saying. Like a but but uh, you had other guys that were at positions maybe you don't know about, like linebacker, cornerback, others that were also fifth and sixth year. And so those yeah. guys will strengthen the, the draft a lot this year. Yeah, their bodies are physically more mature than a 21, 22-year-old because they're 25. And that um, also made, by the way, the undrafted free agents a much deeper pool. So a lot yeah. of the teams picked up the really good players. The whole thing is deeper season. because the last couple of years were lighter. So it, it mm -hmm. kind of, this was the beneficiary year. So mm -hmm. we'll see. Uh, I hope a lot of teams got better and it's going to be better competition. And then you throw in there, the, um, the new kickoff rule seems to be adding mm -hmm. a lot more excitement. So games will be more exciting. So, um, you know, I was a little skeptical about it, but now that I've watched it three weeks in a row, I like it. I think it's going to create more returns. It's going to create longer returns. You're having a lot of these teams starting at the 35-40, so you might see scoring up a little bit this year. Yeah. Um, the, it does put the defense at a disadvantage, and, of course, the NFL has been doing that for years, putting the defense at a disadvantage. But um, I think it's going to create more returns and bigger returns. We'll see. I think what's cool about it is um, not only is it going to affect the game in a positive way, uh, more excitement, but instead of just blasting out of the back of the end zone, 
but um, you might have roster construction slightly tweaked um, to get that special teams player who's no a really doubt. good tackler. There's no doubt. Um, and that special teams player is really ev- elusive when he catches the ball. Or like, the or like, or like Canales talks about my Panthers. Yeah. Um, there's one of the running backs he's going to end up keeping because he said the one thing he's really good at is he's good at that new kickoff. He's, he's one yeah, of the two returners, and he's good at picking a hole. You know, that's what I'm saying is is uh, there might be roster spots that are affected. Maybe it's one or two per team, but it's still going to change the construction of the team in terms mm-hmm. of taking. That's right. The special teams element of your roster. In, an, in a slightly different direction. No doubt. Let's take a look at some of our predictions. All right, so this episode is our episode 28. This is our 2024 season preview and predictions show. Rob and I are going to be going on the record on 2024, and then it'll be a lot of fun to look at this uh, when it gets to January and February and see how we did. First one is, let's look at the NFC East. Uh, all the predictions that are shown on all these slides are from sportsline.com, which is a prediction indicator. And they're actually, this is based on betting lines. So a uh, pretty good indicator usually when people are putting money down on it. And this is what they've got at Sportsline. They've got the Eagles and Cowboys both ending up 10 and 7 in 2024. They've got Washington at 7 and 10 and New York at 6 and 11. And they've got uh, Eagles winning the division on a uh, tiebreaker rule essentially, and the Cowboys uh, getting in via the wild card. Any thoughts about this? I'd switch Washington and Dallas. Okay. Basically, Dallas has slipped. Not only have they gotten older, they let a lot of their linemen go. They re- they're they trying to replace them with young guys. They have the worst running backs in the NFL. They did nothing in the offseason. I couldn't they believe They did it. nothing in the offseason. They have a disgruntled superstar wide receiver who's, who's one of the top three wide receivers in the NFL. He's unhappy. Um, Dak has taken a lot of heat, and so a lot of it's got to be penetrating his confidence level. Their defense has serious question marks. They had a massive injury um, at corner. They have one of the best corners in the NFL, and he broke his foot. Um, I don't see where this team is a 10-7 and 7 team. I see weaknesses all over the place for the Cowboys. Conversely, I see Washington coming up with youth. Um, I think they still have problems, but I think they've addressed many of them, which is really important thing to do with the draft. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And I like the Eagles up there. I think that's right. I think the Eagles quickly rebuilt after getting a little bit old really quickly. I think the Jalen Hurts um, experiment is going mixed reviews. I think he's overpaid, but I think they've done a nice job of – Getting young guys in on rookie contracts. By the way, they they had one of the top three drafts by far. And they had an they had a good draft, draft. and yeah. I think last year they had a bunch of young guys on defense and they got exposed. I think they're trying to shore that up. I'm hearing amazing things about Jalen Carter just ripping mm-hmm. it up. Um, I'm hearing um, they've addressed some of their defensive problems, and um, I just All think right, they're doing pretty good. So you got Eagles at ten and seven. You got Washington at ten and seven. You got mm-hmm. Dallas at seven and ten. You got Giants. Where do you? Think I might have at? the Giants with fewer than six wins. I, I might have so. them in the four so. four win range. Yeah. So what, here's what I like. I'm pretty close to you, but I, I've got the Eagles at eleven and six. Maybe I think they're going to be a little better than ten and seven. I think they're mm-hmm. a really excellent team, and they have a lot of young talent coming in. Mm-hmm. Um, I have Washington at nine and eight, and I have Dallas at nine and eight. I have them both at nine and eight, and I think Washington may sneak into the wild card somehow. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. But if I, think I could, if I could adjust what I said, I wouldn't necessarily give Washington ten and seven, honestly. But I would switch their order, and I think I'd probably give Washington like nine and eight. Something yeah, I think like they're that. nine and eight. I think they're nine and eight, and I think Dallas will be no, nine no. and eight. I think Dallas might not even make the playoffs. I don't think I Dallas play. makes the playoffs. I think mm-hmm. everybody gets fired. Um, and then I think uh, the Giants. I've got them at five and twelve. I think they're going to make. They're going to get five wins. Um, so I think uh, Eagles are clearly going to be the best team in this division. I think Washington may sneak in as the wild card. That's my. I'm prediction. giving you one more hot take. I think Dallas is sliding, and I think Jerry Jones is going to sell the team within the next two years. That's my he hot might. take. You might. You might. Are they going to pay Dak sixty million a year? Probably. And how good is Jaden Daniels going to be for Washington? He's going to have 
bad games, but overall he's going to be good. And I think they're going to do everything they can to protect him from. I think they'll be one of the most improved teams in the NFC. I really do. I think nine and eight is a good solid start for them in the JD. I think a lot's going to come down to what their defense looks like and what their offensive line looks like. I think they have Mm -hmm. stars that can help Jaden Daniels if he has Mm -hmm. time. Right. That's right. All right. So I think we're pretty close on that division and we agree on the order. Let's go to NFC North. So this is Sports Lines predictions, again, mostly on betting odds. They've got the Lions at 10-7 and 7 and Green Bay at 10-7, and 7, essentially tying with the Lions winning the tiebreaker and winning the division. They've got Caleb Williams coming along pretty nicely and taking his Bears to a 9-8 and eight record. And they've got the Vikings, who are actually a pretty decent team, at 7-10. and 10. So they've got this as a pretty strong division. What are your thoughts? Mm-hmm. I switched the Bears and the Vikings. Um I think Caleb Williams is going to have an okay year, decent. I think he's going to show flashes. They'll be better. Um, he'll definitely he'll be, be better. He'll be okay. Next year, he'll probably do even better. And then after that, I'll see a, a decline. I think I think we're looking at a Cam Newton uh, type player who has a lot of physical skills that are special. But I don't think he's special between the ears uh, in terms of um, I think he's got weird diva <laughs> qualities. Um And I think he's not disciplined. I think in the NFL, he's either going to make mistakes that cost his team or he's going to get injured because of holding the ball too long or running for his life, you know, not throwing the ball away. I I think um, he's got diva qualities that are going to, over time, end up uh, that he'll be a dumpster fire. So. Mm Uh, everybody is so excited because he scrambled for a touchdown and, and this and that. Um, they showed that there was an almost identical play by um, Justin Fields. Uh, they had a, a play. They showed a replay of an almost exact same play that he had, and there was no outrage, outpouring of what an amazing athletic play he did and all this other stuff. So there's a lot of Caleb Williams hype that's going on that I think is not built in a reality. So I think he's going to struggle. I think they didn't address the offensive line well enough. I think the Bears are a team that still has a lot of needs. And starting a quarter, a rookie quarterback when you have a lot of needs is a dangerous prospect. Mm-hmm. I think that's a tough division. I think Dan Campbell's defense is going to make mincemeat out of those um, that Bear offensive line. Caleb's going to be running for his life. I think he's going to have flashes. He's probably going to be on Sports Center top 10 every week with one play, just like Cam Newton was. But I think he's not going to get that many wins. Um, yeah. I think Minnesota has a pretty good um, roster, but they don't have championship level roster. So I think both are going to be around. They do eight have the best eight. receiver in football, Justin Jefferson. But Yeah, they're both going to be around eight and nine. I think mm-hmm. Minnesota's going to be slightly better than the Bears, but I think the two the two top dogs in that division are going to be unmistakable. Yeah, I agree. So I, I'm slightly different from you in that I've got the Lions at 12-5. and five. I think the Lions are a really good team. They might be the best team in the NFC. Yep, um, I've they got them at 12-5. and five. I've got Green Bay at 11-6. and six. I think they're really good, and they have something special going with Jordan Love now. The, the reason I would, say, I would agree with you, but the reason I would say that that's going to be hard is because they're going to be playing each other. So, I agree. You know but I mean? they're also going to be playing a lot of other teams. And I will say that I got them 12 and 5 and 11 and 6. And I'll say I will not be shocked if Green Bay is the one that's 12 and 5 and the Lions are 11 and 6. Right. I, agree. I will not be shocked if Green Bay wins this division. Green I'm Bay has a great roster. The they have a great roster. On the record right now. And it's then young. I've, you know, they don't have cap problems. Then I've got the. Vikings at seven and ten. I like that record for them, and they're in third place in this division. Then I've got the Bears at six and eleven. I think they will win six with Caleb okay. Williams. I think he'll have a decent year. They've got a lot of nice weapons. Uh, I don't think they have much of a defense, and so that's where right. they're going to fall right. down. But they will no score question. a lot of points. So I like them to win six games. I like the Vikings to win seven. So I, I can't I see, help. It. I, can't I still help see it. the Lions winning this division at twelve and five, but I I will not be shocked if Green Bay wins this division. Yeah, I can't help but think if if the Bears had stayed with Justin Fields, traded down and gotten multiple picks, um, 
and stack their defense mm -hmm. with these offensive weapons that they brought in, they would be contending in that in that division. Completely agree. Do you agree with me that Green Bay has a chance to win in this division? Yes. Yeah, they have a very good roster. Very good roster. And a really and good young quarterback. And in terms of the Vikings, do you think the injury of J.J. McCarthy and him being out for the year with meniscus, obviously he'll return next year. Do you think that has any impact on their record this year? It does because they could have picked someone else in that spot that could help them this year. <laughs> so, um, right. but no, not really. I mean, it, I don't think it really has an impact because they weren't going to play him anyway. He so. wasn't going to start and he was barely going to play ever. Maybe right. injury, one game here right. and there. But... All, right. Mm -mm. All right, let's go to the NFC South. This is our division, the Panthers. They've got, uh, this is Sportsline saying, and this really surprised me. They have the Saints winning this division at 10 and 7. They've got huh. the Bucks, the Bucks who won this division last year at nine and eight, and they've got the Falcons at nine and eight, who I think are going to be really much better this year. The Falcons, and then they have my Panthers going from two and fifteen to five and twelve, so winning a couple more with uh, with Young this year. But um, this really surprised me. Uh, I'm going to start and lead off with my predictions on this one. Mm -hmm. I completely disagree with this. <laughs> I've too. got uh, I have the Falcons at eleven and six, and I think the Falcons are going to win the division. Um, I like the uh, Bucks at nine and eight. I agree with that. And then I've got the Saints at seven and ten, so I think they're going to come in third. And then I like my Panthers to win six. I'm predicting six wins this year at six and eleven. So, what are your thoughts on the South? I'm going to go differently here. Um, I have the Falcons winning the division, and I can't really put numbers on it, but it's going to be all four. This is going to be the most competitive division in football. Um, I think all four are going to be really close in scores, in um, in record. So it's going to go Atlanta. I predict Carolina comes in second. Oh, wow. Yep. Nice. I think the Bucks come in third, and I think the Saints are last. I don't okay. think the Saints have a very good squad. Um, I think the, the Bucks have slipped a lot on both sides of the ball. I think the Falcons have improved a lot on both sides of the ball. So I think it goes Falcons, Panthers, Bucks, Saints. I have and no it, doubt that the like Falcons 10 and are the best. 7 at first, 9 and 8, 9 and uh maybe 8 and 7 or 8 and 9 and then last would be the Saints probably 7 and 10. I mean like all you. really close. You're saying they're all bunched together, yeah. Bunched yeah, together. I mean, what, if, if the Panthers go nine and eight this year, we will be in absolute heaven in Carolina country because that. I think we're. Improvement I think the Carolina year. Panthers are going to be right around that, fighting for a wild card. That's that's what right. I think. That's awesome. I hope you're right. <laughs> finally but gotten I, better I think... at the coaching level, at the the GM been doing good drafting um, techniques. The both sides of the ball are improving. They have a rookie quarterback who learned a lot last year, and they're going to be able to protect the ball and play defense, and we'll see. They're going to be in the a Saints, lot of close games. The Saints are not great, and I think you're right. I think the Bucks will fall off a little bit. Yep. So I, I like the Falcons to win this division. Maybe but even I do, pretty, pretty I do think the Bucks and the Panthers are going to be battling all year long trying to get that wild card. Maybe so. And I think I the Panthers come out ahead of that. Can they get one? I don't know. Maybe. 50-50 on a wild card for the Panthers. Okay. So you think maybe only one team comes out of this division, possibly? It's possible, depending on what happens in other divisions, that the Panthers could get a wild card. But I give that a 50-50. Otherwise, I think one team out of this division, because they're going to all beat each other up, and neither none of them are so much better than the other. Like, I don't think the Saints are bad. I just think it's yeah. they're the worst out of the four. Right. All right. Let's talk about the NFC West. Uh, Sportsline has the division champ as the 49ers at 12 and five. They have the Seahawks coming in at eight and nine and the LA Rams coming in at eight and nine. Uh, they did mention that the possibility that the Rams might uh, try to sneak a wild card here, especially if the AFC is a little, or, sorry, especially if the NFC is a little down this year. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think any eight and nine teams going to get in. Um, and they've got the uh, Arizona Cardinals at six and eleven. They're still, even though they do have Kyler Murray back and healthy, 
and a, and a uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. Um, stud rookie, I don't see them being a very good team. Matter of fact, I've got them a little bit below six wins. But what are your thoughts on the West? I I have this differently. Uh, I don't I don't agree with this assessment. I think the the Niners are where they're supposed to be, and that number looks about right. I move Seattle all the way down to the bottom. Um, I move both LA and and the Cardinals up. Um, I think LA is going to be a much better team this year, not only drafting, but getting people back healthy. Um, I think LA is going to get a wild card. Uh, I think Arizona is going to be close to 500. So Arizona is going to show improvement, um, but they're not going to make the playoffs. So it's mm-hmm. going to go San Fran, LA, Arizona, and then Seattle in last. That's what okay. I think. Interesting. So I've got I've got the 49ers at 12 and 5 and winning the division. I agree with that record. I've got LA at 9 and 8. I think they'll mm-hmm. win 9. Um they have they're going to struggle on defense a little bit. They lost a lot of defensive pieces. Mm-hmm. So I've got them at 9 and 8. I've got uh, the Seahawks at 7 and 10. And I've got the Cardinals at 5 and 12. I just do not think they're a very good team. I think they're going to be mm-hmm. kind of the, the basement dwellers of the NFC. That's where I got them. And I have the the LA Rams fighting for a wild card spot with a bunch of other NFC teams. It's going to be really interesting. To yeah, see I agree. Comes out the wild card. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I agree with you on Seattle. I don't think they're quite eight and nine. I think they're a little mm-hmm. below that. And I think Cardinals. I think Arizona's going to be better than they've been. I think they're a little better than six and 11. They're not going to, they're not going to make the playoffs or anything, but they're going to be not the worst team in this division, in my opinion. Possibly. Yeah. We'll see. Let's move over to the AFC. We've got the East, which you're very interested in with your Dolphins. Mm-hmm. I know you'll be very disappointed with what Sportsline thinks here, but they think you're going to have the Bills winning for the seventh year in a row at 11-6. and six. They're buying into the Aaron Rodgers hype, and they've got the Jets at 11-6 and six also, but not winning because of tiebreakers. They've got the Dolphins at 8-9, and nine, and in the article it said they're going to struggle because of defense. And uh, they've got the um, – Patriots at seven and ten, which I think is way too high. I think they're going to be one of the worst teams in football. So, what are your thoughts about this? Uh, I'm sure you have a different uh, assessment of what this is going to look like in the East. I think this is wildly wrong. Um, of course, I'm a homer for the Dolphins, so I think they're going to win the division. I do think so, um, but I think B- Buffalo's in third place in this division. Uh, I think the Jets are second, and I think the Patriots are last. You think okay. it's wildly off? I think this is wildly wrong. Um, I think the Dolphins are going to win the division uh, with somewhere around 11 and 6, maybe 10 and 7, probably 10 and 7. Um, I think Jets are going to be second. They're a little bit better with protecting Aaron Rodgers, but I still think they have the same problem. I think he's going to get injured again. So they're going to get a good amount of wins, but they're not going to be 11 and 6. They're going to be more like 9 and 8. Um mm-hmm. The Bills let so much talent go. I think it's going to show up in their performances, and mm-hmm. I think they've slipped a lot. I don't think they added very much, and I think they lost a lot. So in terms of offensive and defensive players, um, they let their whole wide receiving core go. Um, they really, really messed up their team over the off season. So mm-hmm. I think the bills are going to be battling with the Patriots down below, but I think they're going to barely beat them out. Patriots are probably going to be six and 11, maybe lower than that five and 12. Mm-hmm. And then the bills will be somewhere around seven and 10, seven and 10 probably. Um, and wow. the dolphins. Yeah. That's my prediction. You, you really Jets, disagree with this. Yeah, completely. Yeah. So I agree with you. I think the Dolphins are going to win this division for the first time in a long time at 11 and 6. Um, I like the Bills at 10 and 7. I think you're right. They've slipped a little bit, but I think they're going to be right in there. As a matter of fact, I think they will take one of the wild card spots. Um, I think the Jets will be 9 and 8. I agree with you there. So, and they will barely miss the playoffs. And then I think uh, the Patriots are going to get four wins. I literally think they may be in competition for the top pick in the draft. I think mm-hmm. they're going to be a really, really putrid team. Yeah, that's where I think. I think Dolphins. I think they're going to be tough, though. I think they're going to be physical. They're going to be intimidators. They're going to have um, a mean streak. I think the Patriots that 
you can kind of build on a little bit, especially it, defensively. But they're I not going to get many wins. They're not. I just don't think they have many wins. I think they'll be competitive in a lot of games, but they'll lose a lot of games by a field goal, that kind of thing. Um, but I just, I, I really do uh, think that as long as the Bills have Josh Allen, they're going to win at least ten games. That's just what I believe. Um, but I, I, I do think I, the Dolphins. It reminds me of. For- it reminds me of that meme where he's throwing the ball to himself way up in the air and he has to run under yeah. it. There's nobody yeah, there right. anymore. Uh, Josh Allen can't be his best when he has a roster like he has in Buffalo. Right. Absolutely. And there's a lot of questions about his coach, so there's going to be a lot of infighting in the in the locker room. Mm-hmm. I, I just think the, the wheels come off Buffalo this year, and they're going to have to blow it all up and start over because they let too much talent leave. Mm-hmm. No question. All right, let's look at the north. We got, uh, according to Sportsline, Bengals at 14 and 3. And what they're saying in this article is that the Bengals are back with Joe Burrow, that he's fully healthy and he will be fully healthy throughout the whole year. I think that's suspect. I, I'm not sure 14 wins is really possible. I think he might even miss a couple games because he always gets hurt. But I do think they will win this division. I agree with them. I've got them at 12 and 5. Um, I think the Ravens are going to take a little bit of a step back this year. I've got them at 10 and 7. I agree with that record. Uh, Steelers, I've got at 7 and 10. And Browns, I've got at 7 and 10. So I think the two of them are going to miss the playoffs. I think the Steelers quarterback situation is really going to come back and bite them this year. And I think the Cleveland Browns may be done with Deshaun Watson after this season. I agree. I think think the Ravens will sneak into the playoffs via the wild card, but I think they will take a little bit of a step back from last year. Any thoughts on the North? Yeah, I think um, the Ravens win this division, move them into the Bengals' right record. I think um, the Bengals and Steelers are going to be fighting for second. They're both going to be right around nine and eight. Um, and I think the Steelers are going to come out of that on top slightly uh, because mm-hmm. I think Burrow's going to have bang-up games where he's he's not really hurt, but he's injured a little bit. Or he's hurt but not injured. Um, they sit him out for a game here and there and whatever. I don't know that they've addressed the offensive line his whole career. They haven't done it. Um, but he's a star and he's got Jamar Chase. And I think they, but I think um, the Steelers are going to come out on top of that. I think they're going to find a way forward with their quarterback position. They might use both guys all year. Both guys are decent quarterbacks if you give them time and you run the ball effectively do you think the ravens are going to have a chip on their shoulder after what should have been a super bowl appearance last year yeah they're gonna be furious at how they um their play calling in that game where they lost to the um chiefs um where they stopped running the ball uh Mm -hmm. they got derrick henry they are going to pound the ball this year and they're never going to stop and so they're going to win a lot of games in a in a brutal division um, it's going to be – And really the AFC is just brutal, top to bottom anyway. Yeah. So it's just tough. I think getting Derrick Henry sent a, a message. Like we will we never – We made a huge mistake in the playoffs, yeah. and we don't yeah. know why we did that. And right. We're not doing it again. So that, and that's also how you get the best out of Lamar Jackson. And they're um, going to play bully, bully ball essentially. Bully that's ball. They're going to be – so, yeah. Ball. I mean, it's, it's Ravens, Steelers. Steelers and Bengals are very close together. And then um, I think the Browns are going to win way less than eight eight games. I think they're in the six game range. Do you know what they call both of the North divisions, NFC North and AFC North? What? The black and blue divisions. Black and blue, yeah. yeah right. <laughs> Just physical, physical ball. All yeah. these teams play physical. I've never heard the AFC called that, but yeah, NFC, yeah. 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 All right. So let's look at the South. Uh, this prediction really surprised me more than any of the other ones, I think. And that was they had the Colts being significantly better this year with their rookie quarterback from last year coming back and being healthy. They're, they have them, and they say they have a tremendous roster, maybe two of the best lines, both offensive, defensive, and football. A lot of good pass rushers, et cetera. Uh, they have them at 12-5 and five and winning the division. They've got the Texans sneaking into the wild card at 11-6 and six and having another good year. They've got the Jaguars at 8-9 and nine just being kind of mediocre. And uh, the Tech – the Tennessee Titans um, being really, really maybe the worst team in football, two and fifteen. Yeah, essentially, essentially have not solved their quarterback issues and really don't have a good roster, top to bottom. So thoughts here. I I switched the Texans and the Colts. 
Um, I think the Texan roster, the way they've been building it, and they put this nice young quarterback in there, and he got a lot of good experience last year. They brought in Diggs. They, they've, they've added pieces, and they've built properly the way a GM is supposed to. This GM should get a raise the way he built this roster. Um, they're not going to set the world on fire, but they're going to be a very solid team. I think they're going to win this division. Um, the Colts have done a lot of the same things. I like the way they built their their team. They have a really strong offensive line. Um, I think their weakness is defense. And so having a young quarterback that gets hurt sometimes mm -hmm. pretty dramatically last year, um, I think the Texans are the better team. I think mm -hmm. the Colts and the Jags are going to be surprisingly close in in record. Probably the Colts come out on top of that, but I think the Jags are going to surprise some people. I think the Jags will be 9 and 8 and potentially fighting for playoffs. I think the Colts might be around 9 and 8, 10 and 10 and 9 or, or 10 and 8, 10 and 7, sorry. Uh but I think the Jags are going to be a little bit better and I think the the Titans are going to be terrible. I agree. So I'm with you. I, I have the Texans winning this division at 11 and six. I think that's a good record for them. I don't see them quite getting to 12 wins. Um, I have the Colts at 10 and seven and taking the wild card spot. I do think the Colts will make the playoffs this year. I think the Jags are, are going to be an okay team, but I think they're going to fall off in a lot of different areas. Their roster is not great. I have them at seven and 10. And then I think the Titans will win two or three games. I agree with that. I think they're going to be trying to uh, maybe even tank and try to go for the number one pick next year mm -hmm. and uh, try to try to draft their quarterback. They got a legitimate shot at tanking, but Will Levis isn't bad, so I don't know. Maybe if they've got we'll enough pieces around him, they he's going to get a shot this year. Different. He's going to get a shot this year, but I think if he doesn't perform, I think they're going to be looking to draft somebody. Yeah. No, but I, I do agree with you. Texans win the division and Colts take. The I do right. not think a Super Bowl winner is coming out of this division. Let's put it that way. Yeah, I agree. All right, so final division, the AFC West. We got the division champ Chiefs at 12 and 5, Chargers 10 and 7 with the new regime that's come in. And of course, Herbert's still there, but a lot of new weapons to throw to. We'll see if any of them pan out. Uh, but that system that Harbaugh's brought in, I think, will bring at least 10 wins. So I agree with both of those records. The um, Broncos, I think, is a little bit low. I think uh, the Broncos will be a little better than that with Bo Nix starting. I, I like them to get six or seven wins. And then uh, the Raiders, Mr. Henry's Raiders. Uh, I like them to also get about six wins at least with their double tight end situation they've got. Any thoughts here? Uh, generally, I like I like the order of the teams here. I think the the Broncos have greatly improved, um, so they're going to be up closer to five hundred nine and eight or something like that. Maybe eight and nine. They're going to be better. Um, I love what Harbaugh does with teams. It's not that I love Harbaugh. I'm not a fan, but I admire how he has built teams up from nothing. Um, he built up Stanford from nothing. He built up um, the Niners. They were terrible. That's what people forget is they were terrible when he took over the Niners. They fired Singletary, and they, mm -hmm. they were absolutely terrible. And then he built them up into Super Bowl um, contenders. And then he went and built up Michigan. Michigan couldn't beat Ohio State, and they were not good for the longest time. I mean, they were good. They weren't, like, elite. They weren't making it to national championships for a long time. They, they acted like they were national champion caliber, but they never really got there. Uh, mm -hmm. And he made them believe. And so he mm -hmm. built up that team as well. And he does this with his quarterbacks. You know, if, if you think about it, he – he took uh, Kaepernick and built him up. He took Andrew Luck and made him a star. Mm -hmm. And uh, he made J.J. McCarthy the um, the leader and, and built up that that team um, through running the ball. And, and J.J. McCarthy, uh, he was he has good leadership. So he Harbaugh builds teams the right way. You know, his first pick, of course, was an offensive lineman. That's just the right that's the right move. So the Chargers are heading in the right direction. I think they're going to be very much a nightmare to play. Um, you, I like them, you like them to pick off a wild card spot? I do. I do. Um, I think the Chiefs are going to be more like 11 and 6, uh, a little, mm -hmm. little down from there. I think offensively, um, 
they've had some disappointments at wide receiver in the camp so far. And so they're dramatically weaker on defense or substantially weaker on defense. And I think they did not get dramatically better on offense. So I think uh, there's too much pressure on Patrick Mahomes. He's the best player in football, but I don't think he can make this a Super Bowl team. So I think they're going to have some losses on there. Um, this might be the best division in football. So, you know, the Raiders might be a little better than four and 13. I don't know. Yeah, I think I think they'll get six so, wins at least, and I got I like the the Broncos to be eight and nine. I think they'll be just yeah. So for all of them to have you know better records, they're gonna have to beat everyone outside, and also the Chiefs probably can't win twelve. So yeah. um, this is gonna be a tight division. I think the Chiefs win it. Chargers are coming up, and so are the Broncos. Mm -hmm. I think every year over the next three years, both those teams are gonna be. I agree with you. Chiefs, I got Chiefs at 11 6 as well, but I do think they'll win the division and I do think they're going to make some noise in the playoffs. I don't think they'll three peat. I think they'll get knocked off in the playoffs, but yeah, um, no one's going to really want to play them. No. <laughs> and Agreed. you know the reasons why I've talked about it before. So, yeah. All right. Let's talk about the top 10 players in the NFL. This was really interesting. It was on Fox Sports One, but with Nick, it's one of their uh, commentators and he was looking at the nfl list rank that came off nfl.com and he was completely disagreeing with it because on that list it had patrick mahomes at four and of course he's ranking mahomes as the best player in the league he's got trent williams two who was seventh on the nfl list he's got justin jefferson three who was 18th on the nfl list he's got miles garrett at four he's got joe burrow at five who is nine or 39th on the nfl list He's got McCaffrey at six. He's got Travis Kelsey at seven, Chris Jones at eight, TJ Watt at nine, and Tyree Kill at 10, who was the top ranked guy on the NFL list. So, who was second best on the NFL list? Uh, it was Dak Prescott. <laughs> which, yeah, it was a little surprising. <laughs> yeah. I'm closer to. So, to to Nick's list, but Henry can't believe it either. <laughs> Henry, tell us what you think. The, like, like the best. Come on, man. I mean, obviously, Patrick Mahomes is definitely number one. You agree with this list? Let me see. No, no, not all of it. I think Joe Burrow is going to be either third or fourth. You do, yeah. By the way, we didn't even introduce Henry yet. This is the friend of the show, Mr. Henry Peralta. Hello, everyone. How y'all doing? And we're going to have him give us his Super Bowl picks here in a minute, uh, too. So Tyreek Hill. Thinking about Tyreek Hill <laughs> might be a good spot. Travis Kelsey, I mean, depending depending if he um, declines this year, because, you know, he, he was talking about retirement, and now he's right. with Taylor Swift. So his mind is not really yeah. probably anymore. In, in but the best tight end he's ever played. You, you can agree with that. Yeah, he's the like, best tight end. I mean, I'm talking about his whole career. Yeah, yeah, I mean, best tight end, absolutely. Considering you know you got Gronk, but Gronk retired. But yeah, Travis Kelsey, yes. Considering, yeah, he is the best tight end. I mean, my opinion. Yeah, Chris Jones, I think he's beneath T.J. Watt. T.J. Watt's a better player. It's just T.J. Mm -hmm. Watt got hurt. Yeah. I mean, and plus T.J. Watt does play for the Steelers. I mean, Chris Jones plays for the best team in NFL right now. They're like yeah. the. Probably the I don't the know. I, I don't think they would have won the Super Bowl without Chris Jones. He's, he's yeah, so he, disruptive. Yeah, that he's is true. Yeah, you're right. I mean, they you know they talk all about Patrick Mahomes, but they they get away from the defense. You notice in the offseason they went and re-signed Chris Jones to a big contract. They need to. He's, he's that important to their defense. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, Rob, what do you have? Any problems you have with this list, Robbie? Yeah, I mean, NFL list was insane. With Dak at second, I mean. I don't know if that's true that he was second, but uh, I don't see you know, okay. Um, basically, I'm putting Mahomes first. Um, I probably think Trent Williams is good at second. No, no, I'd move him down slightly. I'd put Tyreek Hill up up closer to first, but not at first. Uh, Jeff, Justin Jefferson, Miles Garrett, all these guys are approximately where they need to be. What about Christian McCaffrey? You don't think Christian, Christian McCaffrey's, McCaffrey's higher than six? Yeah, he's, 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 he's closer to third. Uh, Kelsey for me drops off this list a bit. Um, he's probably outside the top ten. 
um, but just barely. But he's an impact player. I think his best years are not in front of him. So he's gonna he's gonna fall off a bit. Um, mm -hmm. I do think Chris Jones is a game record. He 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 provided that pressure that was really messing with the Niners. He's just very disruptive. He's always. If it in wasn't for Chris yeah. Jones, they would have scored multiple touchdowns. Um, T.J. Watt's amazing, but he's been hurt some, so I don't know what his ability to stay healthy is. So he might he might be right at the bottom of that list. Mostly, this list by Nick is pretty close. I think it's pretty close. I I, I mean uh, Justin Jefferson eighteenth, Justin Jefferson eighteenth, and Joe Burrow thirty ninth. That's crazy. I mean, That's crazy. Everyone can agree with that. If Joe Burrow stays healthy, the Bengals are going to go to the playoffs. That's right. I mean, that's right. He may be the second best quarterback in football. I mean, if you he if he's be. healthy, yeah. If you're drafting in, in in fantasy, you have to look at him after Mahomes. Who who would you rather have than Burrow? It's a very tiny list. Well, Tuesday night he, we'll see. <laughs> if he's one of, one of the top guys. Guy. The yeah. problem with Burrow is he gets hurt because his offensive line is is suspect, and therefore mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. never get those stats anymore out of him. And and that's right. It's all predictable, but if his line gets shored up and they can hold, he's he's a beast. So um, the NFL list is insane. I would um, move I would move McCaffrey up a little bit. I'd move Tyreek Hill up a little bit. Me too. Uh, but everybody else, I'm okay with. I think Miles Garrett and Chris Jones are the two most disruptive players in the league. Now that Aaron Donald has retired um, on the defensive side, that is. And yeah. then Trent Williams is clearly the best offensive lineman in football. Yes. Um, and mm -hmm. uh, Christian's the best running back. Uh, Travis Kelsey was the best tight end in football and has been for a long time. I don't know if he is this year. We'll Have see. you ever seen film on Trent Williams, the way he gets off his, his um, the, the snap? Yeah, it's absolutely it's, amazing. He slides in such a way that you can't go around him this way because he's leaning forward, but like dropping yeah. back really carefully. He provides this shield of space that you can't get around. So you like you, this? you try and go wide and he, and he slides his hips to where he pushes you wide. Well, what's and the most important position? In, you try to cut inside, and he's so strong, his hands are there. So you're no, he's not incredible. Through. He's incredible. He's the perfect mix of power and uh, delicacy. Agility. He's, a, yeah. he's an agile, huge yeah. man. But what's the most important position in football? The quarterback position. And so any list yeah. that puts Patrick Mahomes at number four it makes no yeah, sense. Yeah, it's just, just right it, off the There's bat. no credibility with, with that list. There's no The credibility. second most important position in football is the left tackle. OK, so, yeah, I'm OK with Trent Williams being number two. I mean, there's definitely an argument there. You know, uh, I just talked about Trent Williams and, and his technique and how it's it's legendary and how they take young linemen and make them watch him. Mm -hmm. But in addition to that, he's got a mean streak. He's mm -hmm. getting in like fights and throwing people's helmets. And he's he's got he's got like an edge that you want. He's not just some technician up there. He's playing mm -hmm. with some passion. They love um, putting him in in uh, in motion, pulling and having him pull. He loves coming around the corner and just annihilating some poor linebacker. Um, so mm -hmm. Trent Williams, I don't know if I'd put him at second, but man, he'd be up top five. All right, let's talk about Tom and Rob's way too early rookie of the year candidate. You got Caleb Williams. You got Jaden Daniels. You got you mentioned Peyton uh, from uh, NC State. Peyton Wilson, Peyton Wilson, yeah. Peyton Wilson from NC State. You got uh, Xavier Worthy. You got uh, Cooper DeGene, who's one of the better cornerbacks. Mm -hmm. You got uh, for Henry's Raiders, Mr. Brock Bowers. Yes. Henry says yes. Uh, we got Roma Dunze. You got Marvin Harrison Jr. You have uh, Malik Neighbors. And uh, you have uh, McConkey, who's uh, with the Chargers. Mm -hmm. So these are some of your candidates. Who do you think might win Rookie of the Year? I don't know. And it could be somebody else, not on this list, obviously. Hard to say. I I think it's hard for a rookie quarterback. I think um, maybe Marvin Harrison Jr. 
I think either he or Roma Dunze. I think Roma Dunze might have a sneaky good year. I think it's going to be hard for a Dunze because there are all those new veteran wide receivers there that are going to need to get the ball. I mm-hmm. think it's going to be less opportunities for him in year and one. If, and if Xavier Worthy does anything like he's done in preseason, every time Mahomes throws to him, he scores a touchdown. Um, obviously, he's got a chance. He's going to be. On I know, but what I've what I've heard is he's having trouble getting off the line. So True. I think defenses are going to figure out how to jam him. And um, we haven't really seen him against number one off or number one defenses no. yet. So that'll be interesting. Yeah. You put him against a, a Jalen Ramsey or something. All right. Well, you got to go on record, man. Who's it going to be? I don't love this because I don't think it's going to be the person who has the best career. No, I'm not saying career. Just this I know. Year. I know. It's a very different thing. Um, I think offensively, Marvin Harrison Jr. Followed by um, the commander's QB. I think um, it's going to be Jaden Daniels. Daniels. I Jayden think Jaden Daniels. Daniels is going to win it. Yeah. I, I think I he think might, but there's a lot riding on rookie quarterbacks. It's a lot of pressure. Mm-hmm. If he even plays if he goes, well, even if he goes nine and eight or something like that, that's a heck of a year. I think Jaden Daniels is going to have an amazing career. I don't know if it's going to start this year in terms of all the mm-hmm. numbers, but um, I think it's easier for a wide receiver to shine in your rookie mm-hmm. year than it is. You're not asked to block very much. All and by the way, if Malik Neighbors, by the way, if Malik Neighbors was on any kind of competent team, he could be a really good candidate because he's an excellent. I think player. he's shown the most out of all these wook- rookies um, so far, but I believe so little in his team that I, I think he should be rookie of the year. And I think Peyton Wilson might be the steal of the draft. I agree. Yep. Cooper DeGene is going to be a good. I think it's going to come down to Cooper DeGene and Peyton Wilson on defense, mm-hmm. and it's going to be. Um, Marvin Harrison and uh, and Jaden Daniels on offense. All right, well, let's talk about our way too early MVP picks. You got all these great quarterbacks on here, mostly quarterbacks, and you got Christian McCaffrey, um, and you got Justin Jefferson, and you got Tyreek Hill. So you got two receivers and a running back, but mostly quarterbacks. Who do you think might win this MVP this year? I think it's gonna be a Niner. So it's either gonna be Purdy or McCaffrey. Depends on if McCaffrey stays healthy. I think it's going to be a Niner. Okay. Yep. All right. I've it could got... be Lamar because the Ravens are going to win a lot, and he's going to get a lot of the credit that is go- should really go to their defense and running game. But Lamar, Lamar has a really legitimate shot. I've got either C.J. Stroud or Christian McCaffrey. I think it's going to be one of those two. We'll see. Who is in the upper left there? Who is that? That is uh, Jared Goff. Goff, okay. Yeah. Couldn't couldn't really recognize his helmet or. <laughs> yeah. Um, All right, so I went on record. You're going with one of the 49ers. okay? I've got. Or McCaffrey. Lamar. Or Lamar, yeah. I've got McCaffrey or C.J. Stroud. All right, so here you go, man. Way too early. Dolphins and Panthers projections. You've got the Dolphins at what record and how far do they go in the playoffs? I can't remember what I said earlier in this broadcast here. Um, what did I you say? You said 12 11, and 5. You said 11, 12 and 5, 6, and they're going to win the division. Five. Yeah. They're going to win the division at 11 and 6 or 12 and 5, something like that. Okay. I'll and say 11 and 6. 11 and 6. Uh, playoffs. I think they make it to the AFC championship game. Okay. Against lose. Lamar. And lose, yeah. Against Lamar. And they'll probably be in cold weather in Baltimore. <laughs> yeah. Which is their Achilles heel. That's okay though. Nothing like twenty two below zero in Kansas City. That's true. That's true. I like them to win the division, make it to the second round, and get knocked out right before the AFC championship game. Unfortunately. I wish they'd go further, but I think they will lose probably in Kansas City or something like that. Mm-hmm. But I do like them winning the Maybe. division. Panthers, I like getting six wins. You've got them at nine wins. I hope that happens, obviously. They're going to be right around eight and nine or nine and eight. Yeah, I like, like them that. at six, six, maybe seven wins, something like that. Definitely an improved season for sure. They have a shot at a wild card, but I'm yeah. not – It's. I'm telling you, that's 50-50. Yeah. Depends on what if other – 
if they get off to a good start. So the first five weeks of the season, they play four out of five weeks against a rookie quarterback. So they have a real good shot at maybe getting to a good start. If they do, they might be able to do it. We'll see. The the parts you can't predict are the injuries. I'm playing um, a lot of repeat quarterbacks. The way, the way the ball bounces in a tie game right at the end of the game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, a last second kick that gets blocked. You know, just mm -hmm. th there's there's things that are going to be really really close, and a lot of teams that are right in there, um, fighting for playoffs. A little tiny bounce of a ball on 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 an entire throughout an entire game is the difference. Uh, that just comes down to a little bit of luck. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. <clears throat> the Super Bowl picks. So tell me who are the two teams going to be in the Super Bowl and who's going to win it? And then we're going to ask Henry to do the same. Robbie? Niners, Ravens. Niners, Ravens, okay. Niners win. Niners win. Okay. I could see that happening. I've but got the Lions and Chiefs get close. Okay. I like that. Um, I've got I also have the Ravens, <clears throat> but I have them playing the Green Bay Packers and Jordan Love. I have them coming out of nowhere mm -hmm. and upsetting some people in the playoffs. And I have Green Bay and Ravens, and I have Lamar actually getting it done this year. I think Lamar's gonna win the Super Bowl. Hmm. Okay. Henry, what do you think? Henry, what's up? What's up? Okay. This is your way too early picks. Who, who are the two teams? Hey, where are the Raiders? Tom, okay, where are the Raiders on here? Where's your dream or play where you really think so? Here's my <laughs> dream Super Bowl. Tom, where are the Raiders on there? I don't see them. I don't have the Raiders on there. You don't have the Raiders. How dare you? You can still pick them. Okay. So my dream Super Bowl will be the Raiders. Yeah. Um. With Gardner Minshew? Yeah. I mean, I don't understand why they chose him, but obviously they must have seen something in him over O'Connell. I mean, I don't know. But, I mean, obviously they say, if Minshew starts doing bad, O'Connell will come back No, in. Minshew's pretty good. He almost got the Colts. Yeah, good. he did. Yeah. So, I wouldn't mind seeing this, who the Raiders can play in the Super Bowl. Um, Raiders. The Raiders, and it would be like the 49ers or the Packers or the Eagles or one of those teams, right? Or Lions, maybe. Okay, here's my dream Super Bowl. I would love for the Raiders and the Lions to go to the Super Bowl. The Lions, because I like Jared Goff. Yeah, I actually I mean, like the Lions he, I don't understand how they could have lost that playoff game last year against San Francisco. Something went lax. Like, it, I don't know. I got, I mean, I got. They should have won that game. I got conspiracy sure. theories on a lot of things. And watching that game, I was like, dude, the Lions, San Francisco's done. All you got to do is just keep running the ball, quit doing mm -hmm. stupid things. Mm -hmm. And they just yeah. did stupid things. Yep. That game was over in, in the half. Like it was over. By the way, by the way, my 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 pick was Baltimore and the Green Bay Packers in the Super Bowl, with Green Bay being out of nowhere. But I would not be surprised if it's Baltimore Lions. I would not be surprised if, be kind if, of Lions, if the Lions go. Okay, so my dream match would be Raiders and Detroit. Okay. Now, what I really see, so here, here's the thing. I mean, you can't knock off Kansas City going back. I mean, you just can't. San Francisco, oh, man, I don't know. I still think Kansas City will go. So this, um, so this, that was your dream, but this is what you really think is going to happen. Yeah, this is what I think is really going to happen. Okay. I think Kansas City is going to go again, again. Yeah. God, those man, dude, it might even be a repeat of San Francisco and Kansas City. You think so? <laughs> yeah. A repeat? Yeah. Okay. It's As possible. Long, and, and, I mean, that wouldn't be shocking. Right, it wouldn't now, be shocking. Now, San Francisco, <laughs> the only way they would win this game. Is if they if they run the ball with run Christian the McCaffrey, ball with Christian you McCaffrey. have a guy that literally I mean if he if everybody saw the game he was running all over in the third uh, quarter he yeah, was dominant. He, and he was he was dominant there in the fourth quarter like all you gotta yeah. do is run the ball take the time off the clock that's all you gotta do why do you so have dumb. to pass the ball why so and, and remember it went to over to uh, overtime. And he ran the ball all the way down the field, and then they stopped running, and so they ha were forced to kick a field goal. Yes, like I don't get like, so, like I said, yeah. I got my conspiracy theories, and I'm not going to talk about it. But I'm they like, should have won. The coach, literally, which is the same coach that lost the game when he was with Atlanta against the Patriots, where he should have right. kept running the ball. Right. What yeah. are you doing, man? They were yeah. up thirty-eight-three. 
in that game. No, it was yeah. or twenty eight to three. Yeah, I mean the game was over. All you got to do is just run the ball, man. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yeah. Run the ball. Yeah. You get forty seconds every down. Just yeah. run the ball. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. So, yeah, so that's what I think. I think Kansas City and San Francisco another repeat. My dream is Raiders and Lions. Well, this was our guest picker, guys, Henry. And Henry, by the way, tell the folks about your new channel, man. Oh, give, man, give I a got a new channel tell because Thomas it. came up with it. He gave me the idea. It's called Henry's Rock Review. We already did one on the Scorpions Blackout album, which had over 10,000 views. Uh, we have another one, with, which we did with Rob. Um, we did Iron Maiden. If it's not Iron Maiden, it sucks. We did Peace of Mind and Number of the Beast. And I think we have close to over 2,000 uh, views on it now. So it's climbing. So people keep looking at it. Keep checking it out. Also, sports guys, um, check them out. It's, it's amazing. That's why I love these guys. And also look at Thomas Pope. Um, um, his, um, traveling his, through history. Traveling, yeah. He just did an amazing thing on, on the Code Breakers, which I just yeah. uh, uh, saw it this morning, and I was yeah. blown away. Yeah, so, yeah. Very, very cool. Check it all out, guys. Yeah. Thanks, Henry. Yeah. All right, Robbie, any final thoughts, man? 2024, our predictions are on record now. We can't back out of them uh, five yep. months from now. We, we did some hot we're, takes, uh, definitely. If we're, uh, if we're uh, or if we know we're doing. We weighed in on what we think others, how we think they're crazy or they're right or whatever. And maybe uh, Henry's right and we're not right. Who knows? I think the injury piece is impossible to predict, and that's where a yeah. lot of these things are determined. Um, you know, you make your own good luck, but you uh, – your biggest luck factor is putting your A team out there. When you put your B team, there's a significant drop off in talent level most of the time. Mm -hmm. And when backup linemen are in there, your quarterback's going to get killed. And it's not a reflection on him, but his court, his numbers as a quarterback are going to drop. And that's just the way it is. I have a really good feeling that the Ravens are going to have periods of this year that they struggle, but that they're going to sneak in via wild card, that they're going to have a chip on their shoulder, the world against them. And they're going to end up playing Jordan Love and the Packers in the Super Bowl. And Ravens are finally going to get it done. Lamar Jackson gets his ring. Just my gut. Yeah, I think the Ravens are going to do really well this year. I think um, that running game and the defense are going to hold it together uh, dramatically well. Or not dramatically well, but they're going to do really well against real good teams that they have to face week in and week out. A lot of close games. I think they're going to win a lot of them. Uh, and Lamar is going to be called the MVP. I think the MVP is going to be um, our Derek Henry. And um, But regardless, I think they're going to get a lot of wins and they're going to go pretty deep. I think the Niners are going to win it. All right. Well, we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. Guys, thanks for tuning in this week, and uh, please like the video, please subscribe to the channel, and uh, we got a lot of great stuff coming your way, and uh, really excited about NFL season coming. And And please make fun of us if we're wildly off, because it's going to be very, very humbling. Um, We're going to be live streaming on Tuesday night, we're going to be live streaming our fantasy football picks, so you can uh, make fun of us there too, if we do good or bad. And uh, anyway, have a great week, and uh, we'll see you next time.